an old keyless lock. The trick is to enter a combination from the smallest number to the largest. Okay, time to place some pins. This is one of the sounding numbers Magnus was looking for. Duct tape? Rope? Oh, these aren't just supplies. This is everything you'd need to kidnap a full-grown man. Can I help? Is there anything more you haven't told me about, Magnus? No. Guess you'll have to leave now. Elizabeth, I'm trying my hardest to find Magnus, but I have to admit I can't do it without you. I need your help, Elizabeth. I need to know what you know. Hmm. He is quiet, thoughtful, keenly obsessive. First over his dog, then over his writing, then over me, then over the ship. Why would someone like him be hunting for gold in the first place? He has certain intentions with the treasure which were a boat of his own he desperately wants to leave town leave eastland i thought he was a captain already oh he is but for wealthy people private clients never his own boat never his own destination he dreams of living like the old captains sailing wherever the wind takes him i see so the treasure would allow him to fulfill that dream here have this magnus left it at my place after we broke up, he called me looking for it, but I hid it. It looks like it might be the key to open some kind of box, but I've never seen any box like that before. I don't know why I kept it for myself. Maybe I wanted to see whatever it was he saw in this hunk of driftwood. Thanks, Elizabeth. I'm going to get to the bottom of this mess. Later. Bye. I didn't think it was possible to be this cold. Can't you go inside? I keep asking people to fix this broken heater so I can watch over my ship. You know what Gunnar told me? Freeze for all I care. He is the worst human being. Maybe I can help you out with that heater then. Do you know how to do machine things? I've picked up a few things. I don't care what they say. You're okay, Nancy Drew. So we're gonna do this middle management style. That is, you do the work and I supervise. Each of those circuit pieces will attach anywhere on this board, but there are special numbers you've gotta watch out for. Covered numbers add together to give that piece a total value. If you can use all five pieces to hit all five target values, the heater will be fixed. Hmm, you know, I'm actually not sure that's how electricity works. <laughs> oh yeah? Okay. Where'd you get your PhD in electricitology again? If you know this much, why haven't you tried to fix it yet? Hey, if I had to do all the hard thinking around here, you'd be out of a job. So, where'd you come from? The United States. Hey, me too. Where in the U.S.? South-ish. I'd just like to get to know you a little. I went to school, and then I had a job, and then I was married, and then I wasn't. And now I have another job involving definitely legal treasure hunting activities. That's me. Are you like this with everyone? That was the strangest wiring panel I've ever seen. But I think the heat's on. <sighs> Toasty. Feels just like home. By the by, have you been up to Magnus's cabin yet? He has a cabin? Up in the hills? Elizabeth keeps a key in her bag. Talk about refusing to let go. But there's no way she'd ever give it to you. So, I'll need to find a way to get her off that deck. If I were you, I'd get a little sneaky about it. So, how long were you working on the ship project? About two years. On and off a bit. Magnus supervised the rebuild. I provided the cash. That's a long time to hang around in Iceland. Have you been in Skipbrot all that time? 
Ha! No. I think the locals would have offed me by now if that were the case. I don't like to stay in one place for too long. Why is that? If you stay in one place, people start to need you and feel things about you and all that icky, weird stuff. I'm not really the having friends type. I'd like to think you and I are on friendly terms. What is this? Are we gonna hold hands and sing campfire songs now? <sighs> Get lost, Drew. Find my gold. I found a radio on board, but I need a key to turn it on. Can I borrow yours? Here you go. Hey, that was easy. Now, how do I operate the thing? I don't know. I don't have radio experience. I have business experience. Figures. Well, thanks anyway. Later. Stay warm. Can I help? What's your relationship like with Elizabeth? Presently quite poor. She won't allow certain, um, members of the restoration team to access their work. You mean Dagny? Yes, but overall, she's quite a peach, that one. <laughs> the only one who's ever shown me kindness. Truly a shame about her and Magnus, though. Her and Magnus? The force of their romantic split rocked the local mountains to their very core. I wonder if he's checked his voicemail since. <laughs> I'll let you go. Well, on with it. Good day. Hi there. I'm investigating a recent disappearance. My name's Nancy Drew. Speak up, girl. My name's Nancy Drew. Louder! I said my name's Nancy Drew. Mind your ship flag and temper. Looks like we got a real angry one here. Name's Gunnar, but you can call me Gunnar. The skip is my home. Oh. <sighs> Did you attend the festival this year? Yes. Embarrassing. For you? Not everyone else. The scrambling around for hidden treasure? Embarrassing. When I was all young, we fought over things like longest fish and shiniest boat. Not gold. Ever since that sword took over the festival running, it's been straight to the bottom with it. Are you a sailor? Was. Long ago. I gave up the sea for good, and I'll never sail again. You still look like a sailor to me. What does a sailor look like? It's a certain quality. I can't quite place it. Worn? Broken? Bitter? The sea chewed me up and spat me back out, and I lost everything in her waves. You are too delicate. I bet you'd not last one minute against some of the gales I've sailed. I'm finding that these days I'm surprisingly hard to kill. Well, we'll see about that, detective, won't we? I hate the water. Hate the smell of it, the sound of it, won't ever return. Have you met Dagny? Who? Huh? She's the woman involved with the Hirlik High's restoration. Brown hair, about yay high. Ah. A tough little mink of a woman. Not bad in my book. Did you see her the day of the ship crash? Yeah, she was there, but I paid no attention to the mink. How do you know Elizabeth? I've known her since she was a negative pre-glimmer in her puppy's eye. Always had the local boys terrified, that one. She knows what she wants and heads for it straight as an arrow. Young men, <laughs> not so good with a woman like that. I can see how she might be intimidating, but her heart's in the right place. Aye, but right now, she wants revenge on Magnus, angrier than a bull seal on a full moon. Still, she lets me sleep and eat her, so that's worth something. Did you know about her and Magnus? <laughs> we all did, my fisker. From the sound of things, it didn't end very well, unfortunately. Magnus is good with waves, bad with woman. No skills to speak of, he is, um... 
How do you say it? A, a runner. He runs. Ouch. I'm glad he's not here to hear that. I was bitten by a shark once. Now I can only speak the truth. Oh, I didn't know that was a side effect of shark bites. It is a curse I bear with pride. So, about your fingers. My lucky tree? <laughs> is that what you call them? Sure is. It's a long story. No, there I was, out in the peach black of night, with no sign of shore and only my fishing spear. Then suddenly, I saw a shadow. It was a mighty squid, the greatest hunter of them all. Few men have lived to see it and tell the tale. So I pulled out my spear, just a little too fast, mind you. And that's how you lost your fingers? <laughs> of course not! I threw the spear right overboard, and I hauled that fellow into my net. Took all my weight just to keep him from wriggling free. But his strength proved too much for me. He gnashed his giant beak, and, well, I was done for. So the squid took your fingers? No, 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 no! Right as I thought I was dead, a massive shark leapt out of the waves and ate the squid. It was the sleeper shark, a solid six meters long with four rows of teeth. He bit my arm and pulled me under as I gasped for my last breath. So it was a shark then? No! I, I managed to punch him in the nose. Do you, you ever fight a shark? You know how to punch him in the nose? He, he let me go. I swam like a merman and made it back to shore. Three months later, I was in a wood shop accident. Rubbed my fingers clean off. Uh huh. At least it makes for a great story. Did you know Magnus? Sure did. Never liked him. Did something happen between you two? No, I don't like anyone. I don't think I like you. I'm still gumming it over. So I take it you weren't friends. Gunnar doesn't need friends. Already I have two, mug and chair. Did Magnus ever say anything about the treasure? I uh, might have. Don't remember? No, I, I have a very good memory. Go away. I'm sorry, but he could be in danger. I need your help. Don't care. Don't want trouble. I heard you've had problems with the festival the last couple of years. Care to talk about that? The festival is not what it once was. I'll return things to the old ways, no matter how many buckets of hot tar I have to dump. Some of the harbor boats still have holes in their bottoms. I see. Did you have a plan like that for this year, too? Elizabeth said no more trouble or she kicks me out of the skip. I only pay with an angry sheep. What does that mean? Means I do it, but I don't like it. Goodbye. <sighs>
I probably shouldn't be back there. Gunnar, I need your help in the pub while I watch the ship. Can you serve customers tonight? <laughs> Wouldn't need the help if you'd leave the blasted ship alone for a night. I need to stay on board. That means you need to pull your weight for once. I won't leave my chair for no tourist. If they want a drink, they can use the tap themselves. Their hands ain't broken. Can't you leave well enough alone and come back to the skip, girl? The ship isn't going anywhere. It's crashed. I just... I have something I still need to do. Of course you'd be selfish about helping me. Just like always. Are you hiding something now, girl? Something you're keeping from old Gunnar? Ugh! Fine! Sit there in that stupid chair for all I care! There'll be no service at the Misty Skip tonight! Happy now? Good day. You spend a lot of time in the pub, don't you? Why? What kind of a question is that? Am I a lonely little man sitting in the pub crying over a tiny plate of pretty biscuits thinking about all the women I've ever lost and writing it all down in some wimpy little notebook? No! Then I would be Magnus. Me. I am a mountain wolf. I roam the wilds and I keep my own company. I am a predator. Goodbye. Oh. The year was 1783, when Lockie Fishers opened and vomited fire and smoke onto the land. Thousands perished immediately into the madness, and the sky grew dark, and even foreign lands were covered. We called those times the mist hardships, and in that darkness, the people of Skipbrot struggled to survive. 
One night, the ship came crashing into harbor. It was the Herlikai. Captain Lawrence and his crew were rescued and taken in. Once ashore, Lawrence explained that he carried with him a mountain of golden treasure. He promised to share it along with his ship's food supplies in exchange for shelter until winter's end. That winter was darker than ever. No stars shone and soon even the supplies on the Herlikail ran thin. But even in the middle of that hardship, love bloomed. For Lawrence had fallen in love with Alda, the daughter of the town's founding family. Soon, Lawrence and Alda were wed. And soon after that, the marriage bore a baby girl. Eventually, the poison water drew away from the shores and the fish returned to Skiprot. Thanks to Lawrence, many more people had survived than in neighboring towns. The townspeople wanted to rebuild their home. They needed money and fast. They needed the treasure Lawrence had promised them. But Lawrence explained that he would need to sail somewhere else in order to retrieve his promised treasure. The townspeople called Lawrence a liar. They accused him of trying to escape with his new wife and child. They grew angrier and angrier. Soon, a fight had broken out. When the dust cleared, the townspeople looked in horror at what they had done. Alde was no longer breathing. The townspeople carried the heavily injured Lawrence into the inn, intending to banish him once he had recovered from his wounds. But he too passed away, leaving only a diary for his young daughter. That daughter eventually grew, married, and bore a daughter of her own and so on. Today, Elizabeth is the only remaining descendant of the original Captain Lawrence, but the fabled treasure Lawrence spoke of was never found. Oh, what a sad story. This is so neat. I wish I could play these. some differences in the halves of this pattern. Check. <sighs> I should try to get some sleep while I'm here.